this technology is not brand new. This technology has been around for about two decades. Uh, the big challenge that we face in society is that though this technology is available commercially, it has not been widely used. And the reasons for it not being widely used is one of the reasons why this technology can can be considered to be still an expensive technology to adopt. But if you actually do the economics of this technology in terms of treating wastewater or, dr or treating drinking water to remove microbial contaminants, it is very, very competitive. In fact, it's probably a lot more inexpensive to use this technology than some of the other conventional technologies that water utilities use. So in our current world that we've been facing uh, in the last few months about Ebola and its presence in wastewater, et cetera, this is a technology that is, as I call it, off the shelf, that is available to municipalities and to cities and to even hospitals to adopt. Now, one can ask the question, is this technology a one-size-fits-all in terms of the equipment specifications? And my answer is no. There's obviously going to be a need for very large uh, landed facilities and high high energy and high infrastructure equipment needs for a large city like Houston or Dallas, for example. But if you're looking at the needs of a hospital, the technology can be relatively miniaturized in the sense of making it fit within maybe one or two trailer trucks. So the technology can be and has been shown to work when you customize it for different applications. And what is a big um, opportunity exists is um, for there's a lot of technology available in the United States where this technology can be brought to bear to answer some fundamental public health issues about how do you decontaminate water that is coming out of a um, highly um, infectious waste stream or how do you decontaminate solid waste that may be coming out of an infectious hospital for example what we saw happen in Dallas in the case of the Ebola patients. Uh, one of the challenges we have is educating the public and the decision makers about what this technology is and what it is not. One of the advantages of what I call the beautiful aspects of electron beam technology is that it is based on commercial electricity to generate the electrons. There is no need for radioactive isotopes, there's no need for radioactive materials. But this is something a lot more powerful than the microwave oven. If people are comfortable in using microwave ovens in their homes for heating foods, etc., this technology, in a lot of sense, is no different. It switches on and switches off when we don't need it. There is, it is not a question of adding radioactive materials to the water or any of that information. Unfortunately, there's a lot of naysayers who talk about the negative aspects of this technology without understanding the actual uh, technology per se. So. My, our goal at the National E-Beam Center is to educate the decision makers, is to educate the general public about the benefits of this technology and why it's extremely important for an advanced country like the United States to be starting to use this technology to solve some con contemporary challenges we face. Uh, this technology is commonplace in the food industry. About 80% of all our spices are treated with this technology. Uh, a large numbers of uh, imported produce, for example, some of the produce from Mexico, from India, from Pakistan, are treated with this technology. Uh, it is a commonplace. This technology is commonplace for all the medical therapeutics that are being sterilized as per FDA requirements. Um, all the female uh, feminine products all the suppositories, all the catheters, everything is sterilized by this technology and by similar technology. So uh, the society is very familiar with this technology, but what the decision makers in municipalities and the hospital industry and the large cities have to realize is that the technology can be and should be adopted for wastewater remediation. Uh, it's coincidental that this technology actually has been funded by Texas A&M AgriLife Research as one of the technologies that can be used to substantially increase uh, the amount of water that's available to Texas. And the way we are planning to use this technology is for the recycling the ult as a finishing step of the ultimate water reuse projects. For example, there are two major projects in Texas that are ongoing. One is in Big Spring, uh, Texas, where they use uh, raw wastewater treated multiple times 
enzymes using chemicals, membrane filtrations, etc. We have actually shown data. We have now published, uh, we are now demonstrating that this technology can make the whole process a lot more cost effective, a lot more inexpensive than current technology. So we are trying to work with the Texas Water Development Board, the Texas Environmental Commission to get more people familiarized themselves with this technology so it can be used in water reuse, which ultimately means more available water for agriculture, for industry, or for household use. So we are very excited about all what this technology can do. As I mentioned earlier, this is a technology that can be used for cleaning, which means cleaning the water, cleaning wastewater, cle uh, reusing water, uh, for cleaning up even um, uh, industrial uh, fumes coming out of uh, smokestacks, and this technology is very, very versatile. And the interesting part is that this technology does not have to rely on chemicals. So it is the ultimate green technology because we use electrons, and if, and if you just think about it, we are all made of electrons. So it is the most, quote unquote, most organic of all technologies uh, that this technology can be used because we basically harness the electrons that are present in each and every one of us to to do its application for the applications we are trying to address.